All right, this is a continuation um, of my experiments with these um, neat proximity sensors that they're using on these uh, 3D printers. And because of the 3D printer market, they've come way down in price. They used to be pretty darn expensive, but now you can get them for under 10 bucks. So um, there are two types that I'm, I've come across. There's the capacitive sensor and the inductive sensor. And this was the one I showed in my last video, uh, triggering a pulse mover using an aluminum strip. Uh, this is the capacitive one. And uh, this is how they're working it. They set up a tank circuit, which is, you know, is, is from a water tank sloshing back and forth as the current goes between the coil and the capacitor. It sloshes back and forth. and Technically, it would go forever, but you have resistance that takes out the energy. You add energy to that circuit and trigger it just right, and it sets up an oscillator. So what they do there is they set up an oscillator using a tank circuit. Then they vary the capacitance or the inductance and uh, create a sensing. And let me uh, show you, um, first off, what this is drawing when it's not running here. That's the uh, current. Uh, this one happens to need at least 6 volts, so I'm running on a 9 volt battery. That's what the uh, device is using to oscillate that circuit. And what happens is if you change the capacitance or the inductance, it goes into another circuit, a trigger circuit, and they're using a Schmidt trigger type of circuitry to trigger the um, signal that goes out here and people are asking what the circuit diagram is well on these things they show you what it looks like and uh, you're supposed to put a really a, a transistor here because they can only handle 300 milliamps but on my little motor here I don't need that much juice it's just not that much coming out so I can get away with no transistor just straight but you see it's a little switch signals uh, indicator right there that when uh, this circuit is triggered it flips that switch and you can use it to run a pulse motor and how I'm getting away with it is that's a very high resistance fine wire coil so I don't even need a um, a transistor but there's the the current coming out of a 9 volt battery that's a 1.4 milliamps and if I take my hand and go near that thing the trigger will start to the circuit will start to trigger because I've changed the co local capacitance and that circuit is so sensitive, it's changing the capacitance. Now this little rotor here is made out of paper, and I put a piece of electrical tape on each little wing, and the same thing happens when this rotor gets near that sensor. It changes the capacitance just enough to cause this um, motor to trigger. Now here is the other really neat thing. There's the current uh, on the thing right now. If I take my hand and I go near this thing, I can change the capacitance and speed the motor up. See the amp draw? And I thought that was really, really interesting that you can um, change the local capacitance in the local area there and get the um, motor to change RPM. You could do it with a pencil too. See the, see the current going up and the RPM going up? And it's just changing the local capacitance in the local area there. But like I say, this was um, video number two on these um, proximity sensors, uh, either capacitive or inductive, and without using an optical sensor or a reed switch or something else. And I've been talking to Slider um, a little bit about possibly being able to make something like this that would work on a low low voltage using a jewel thief circuit and I've had a little bit of success so far but um, the problem I'm at right now maybe somebody can help me was once I get the circuit running of course I can vary the frequency with inductance or capacitive change but then it's the trigger part the part that's back here that's the Schmidt trigger I need to have some way to trigger that variance in signal to snap a switch sharply to turn that coil on and off. I don't want a, a gradual thing. I need a snap like this. And there's a little light on the back of this. You can see blinking. 
And also right here, there's a sensitivity control on this one that you can adjust the sensitivity, which really, really helped. But anyway, that's where I'm at with this um, um, sensor um, study. These proximity sensors, very uh, interesting uh, little project I'm working on here with this um, way to trigger a pulse motor using different types of sensors. Thanks for watching.